Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Norman, playing, playing Super Sport is always uh, a tough match, regardless of the competition and regardless of the frequency as to how many times have you played them and what was the outcome of the previous result. So we are expecting another, another tough encounter. It took, it took us 80 minutes in the previous match to, to break the match down. And uh, again, we are going for, for the same encounter, which is always fierce, very aggressive, a uh, lot of aerial battles, uh, and a very good team to play against, uh, coached by one of the best coaches in the country. So we are expecting a, a, a very, very competitive match. Uh, which we have to be prepared for and never take things for granted. We all know it was not the easiest uh, match that we played uh, this weekend, so we know what to expect. Uh, coach, um, uh, Jose is from Far Post. Uh, in, uh, over the weekend, uh, the new signing scored uh, late in the game. Do you get tempted to start them in this game? I wouldn't really think it would be a temptation to start them. Uh, I think it would probably be based on the processes that we are following inside in terms of the number of minutes that we think they can play. If we feel uh, they are ready to give us the 90 minutes, we might decide to start them because uh, it was never an issue of whether can they start the match or not. It was mainly an issue of how far they can go in a match. And uh, they have played two matches uh, as substitutes. Uh, possibly possibility of them starting or one of them starting is there, uh, but we'll have to, to see what happens in our match day minus one training. Coach Jimmy, <coughs> um, Coach, the game against City Sport was yours and Coach Rulani's 100 game charge for Sundowns across all competitions. I'm sure that, um, you know, those kind of milestones for you, what do they mean? Um, is it something that you guys uh, would have chatted um, ahead of time? Is it something that you guys would have said, you know, by the time we get to 100, this is what we want? 63 means uh, 28 draws, 9 defeats? To, to be honest, it's, uh, we, we, we have to appreciate uh, such outcomes. But uh, the truth is we, we never really focused on how many matches we have played now. We always worried about the next match, the next match, the next match. Uh, it's, it's never really something that is, is for us as coaches to, to count, hey, how many matches have we played now and how many have we won? Because uh, you can win the wrong ones that do not make you to win trophies, but you've got a very good number of wins, but uh, you get to the final and lose and still win four matches after that, get to the next final and lose. So for us, it's not the most important thing, but when it's there, we must appreciate and also understand that uh, results like those uh, are a reflection of the group, not a reflection of the two coaches or the three coaches or the four coaches. It's a reflection on the whole group that is the bunch of players that we have, the technical team that we have, the support staff that we have, the management that we have, uh, the leadership from the board, the chairman and the pres and the president of the club, it's a reflection on the whole group, not particular individuals. So we really never take it to heart and think we are we are special. We we appreciate being part of the group. We take questions from this side and move this side. Makova and then Lorenzo. Good morning, coach. Uh, we are from Power FM. Um, coach, I mean, for past seasons. Whenever you start a season, you know which period you're starting and you know which period you're finishing. You're finishing. But I think in, in just a couple of like two or three years, there's been external forces that have sort of um, made teams other sort of restructure in terms of planning. One of them being the COVID-19 period. Um, this time, this time around, is the the World Cup in Qatar that sort of now um, sort of changed the whole setup of what would have been either the first half of the season. I just wanted to find out internally at Sundowns has there be, then been much restructuring that needed to be done to make sure that either the team picks at the right time or. <coughs> Obviously, with uh, with our periodization, it's always important to know that we we don't want to start on a high, 
We used the first five matches as part of the last measure cycle of our preparation period. Uh, and if you get the outcomes that are very good in, the, in those first five matches, it's good for you. But uh, you know you are still within the preparatory phase. And uh, knowing the, the number of matches that we are expected to play within the next uh, two months now, uh, it is also very important to periodize uh, your work properly to make sure that you don't burn out quickly, you, you are ready to, to play till the last match. And uh, that requires a lot when you consider that we are playing two to three matches every week. And it's, it's, it's going to be even more difficult for many teams to cope with that. Maybe for us it will be slightly better considering that we've been in this uh, for many seasons now with uh, the Champions League and all these other matches that we play per season that always force us to play two to three matches every week. Uh, there hasn't been much restructuring. In fact, uh, there has been a, a reinforcement in making sure that we, we've got players that we believe all of them are capable to help us in, in, in this grueling season. Uh, instead of having a big number, but you're still not confident about others. And already the number of players that have had a chance to play now does suggest that we, we are really looking to have a broader, broader squad that can be able to take the dose of all these matches that we are expected to play in this short space of time. When players leave the club and when players into the club, sometimes there's a you know, change in morale within the squad. Um, has there been a positive or a negative effect with um, the new incomings and outgoings? <coughs> and has there been anything done as a collective to integrate the new players, especially now that they can't speak English that well? Who can speak English? Alindi, Nasir. Speaks very good English. You guys said yourself you got duped this way for him to try to speak. No, no, the, the truth of the matter is Alende, his English is very good. He, remember, he was with Arsenal for quite some time, and uh, he, he speaks very good English. Yes, here and there he might be caught, but he's, he's, he's comfortable in the language, so we don't have issues uh, in that. And in, with regard to the integration of the new players and uh, what happens when others go and others come in, I think we are used to that culture now of uh, having to receive those that are coming in and congratulate those that uh, must go and, and deliver somewhere else because the challenges and the tasks that are expected uh, in this club is, is hard for everyone, not only for the players but even for us coaches. We have a responsibility every season to strengthen the club and at times it's, it's never even an issue of the quality of the player as such but it's probably the type of a player that we are looking for at that point in time which makes other players to, to, to end up leaving and other players coming in. But uh, we, we, we really pay special attention to, to everything that we are trying to bring into the club so that we do not make too many mistakes. Uh, one would say Pavol is gone, Nasir is in. And Pavol scored nine goals last season. And he, was, he did very well. That return is not a bad return. But... Uh, we wanted some, maybe we wanted something different uh, and we, 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 we believe we are on the right track to get what we are looking for. And we congratulate those players that have helped us. Remember, he, he helped us to get into the final of the, of the M1080, he helped, us, he helped us to get into the final of the Netbank Cup. So we, we must appreciate, but that does not mean we must not keep looking for what we think will really bring uh, the type and the style uh, of, of the game that we are looking for for the club. Uh, coach, just uh, uh, your thoughts on, 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 on the Palace match. Um, having drawn them now, you think you're going to defend them three times before the end of the year. Um, Which one? Palace. Uh, no, I, no, at this um, stage I would not want to, to talk about Palace. I, I have a serious match this this, this uh, in the next two days, which I, I think if I divide my attention and the, the, the team ends up dividing their attention, we will have a problem. So our focus should be super sport. They've got a very important three points that we must get. And uh, at this stage, I would prefer to, to entertain 
super sport. No, he's coming up nicely. He has, he has played uh, one friendly a uh, few minutes there. We want to build him up properly and uh, he's on the right track. He's looking good. He's, he has lost some weight and we believe in the next two, three, probably four weeks, he might be able to really help us. Um, Coach, I just need to find out something quickly with regards to the new players. <coughs> Can you take us through the, the, the transition or the integration still? I'm, I'm seeing that sometimes before you used to take players and, and keep them for a longer time, then at night. Uh, but now we've seen them. Uh, I mean, Marcelo has already scored a goal. We've seen, um, you know, the, 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 both of them actually have come through and just probably, like I would say, walked into the team um, when they are foreign players. Uh, but would they like any time for you to deal with them, to bring them to speed with the rest of the team? Uh, to be honest, it's not always an easy exercise. Even at this stage, you would not say they, they are really completely integrated into the group. They have done well. They have scored some important goals. They have had some very good matches. But the integration process of players normally takes a little bit longer. Uh, and if you are lucky that players adapt to, to our playing concept very quickly, probably it would be either they were coming from teams that were playing almost the same formation, or maybe the style of play is not very different from, from, from those teams. And uh, with our type of football, I think it's also easier to, to, to fit in if you are a technically gifted player, because it's, 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 it's a playing concept that requires a lot of finesse, a lot of movement, a lot of intelligence, and a lot of running, to be honest, because we, we work very hard off the ball to try and make sure that we don't give a chance to the opposition. Uh, very few matches where we give away big chances, but when we give those few chances, it is probably because of one or two errors here and there. So it's, it, it is normally very easy to bring. Uh, new players in, into our system because even our identification process uh, requires that we look at what we think can influence our playing concept or our playing philosophy better. And when we look at these players from the teams they are coming from uh, and you look at uh, Allende, what he does for, for the Chile national team, the position that he's playing for the national team, then it makes it easier for you to, to know exactly what you think that particular player can bring into, into your setup. The same thing with Nasir, we, 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 have, we saw a lot of matches for him and we saw him in his national team and we know exactly what, what type of a specimen we are looking for to try and get us what we want to, and what we believe will help us maybe in, in our attacking play. Then we must also congratulate them for being able to, to get into a team with so much pressure because it's not easy for, for all these players to, to come into this group of players and not lose their confidence and come in with a very positive self-esteem and the belief that they can make a difference because truly speaking, uh, it's always difficult for every player at Sundowns to be guaranteed a chance to play. Uh, coach, it said that you are good as your last game and now you're facing super sport. Does it get uh, difficult the second time around? And basically, on the basis of the performance that you had on Sunday, you then fine tune what you already have in making sure that you still get the positive results this time around. The second match uh, in a row is, 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 always, is always having a lot insight. Uh, one, the level of intrinsic motivation uh, from your, your players vis-a-vis -vis the opposition. How much do they want it and how much do your players want it? But uh, also it, it has elements where if you have beaten a team in the first match, they come to the second match with nothing to lose. And when, when you go all out and you know, if, if I lose, that is what everybody expects. Uh, that I'm going to lose anyway, then you give everything. And when you give everything and you are playing with that mentality, in most cases you always have better energy 
better focus and better commitment to each and every situation in the game. But uh, we've got a very committed uh, bunch of players and uh, the competition amongst our players also makes them not to say, uh, I, I, I want to play less in this coming match because you know there's someone who is, who is really, really looking forward to get an opportunity if you make a mistake. So competition alone increases the level of uh, motivation from our players and maybe even the level of focus. Uh, there, there are matches where you also get surprised some, sometimes, uh, like the game against TS Galaxy, where most of our players were, did not show the performance that we expected. And it was a very inconsistent performance and that is something very rare with our group of players uh, because they know they always have the responsibility to improve or better the previous performance and even now this morning we were already looking at what we did not do right against Supersport in the previous match and what we can improve and what areas do we think they nearly punished us on and how can we improve in those areas and uh, there's a lot of work that this team puts behind to make sure that we influence the outcome and we, we, we are always optimistic that we will always give our best no matter what. And our best is, is always good enough. Thanks. Thanks, Coach Tepo from ENCA. Coach, I know there's still 25 matches to, to, to be played in the league, but um, five games, 10 points from your possible league team. Is it from the technical team? Are you comfortable with that? Or do you still think you have done better? Looking at the fact that by the time you play, To be honest, we, we did not do according to our plan. <coughs> our plan always must give us more points than what we got in the, in the previous match. But the, the other side of that is that sometimes when you start very well, we don't finish uh, very well. Uh, I remember the year we had 71 points. Our first cycle of five matches, we only had seven points and we had to improve from there. Last season, our first three cycles maybe we had 13 points, but uh, our, the cycles after that were not as good as, as the cycles at, in the beginning. So we, we have a bigger responsibility to always look at this thing through the eye of the needle and, and see where, where did we go wrong? Couldn't we have had better, a better result against TS Galaxy? we know we could have done better. Against Kukune, we know we could have done better. And those two matches leave a blemish in, in, in the ultimate outcomes. So we, we have a bigger responsibility to try and recover along the way. And maybe when we are playing with that mentality to recover, that's when you stay more focused than when you think you, you have done it all the right way and you start sitting in your laurels and thinking you, you have achieved it all. So we, we, we are fully aware that we did not get what we wanted, though it was not bad, but we could have done better. Uh, Coach Benjamin Miranda, Football Life. Uh, it's just a follow-up on what Seth has said. Uh, you said after the game against Kukuno that you were not much disappointed because you were within the, the, the five game second. Now you are going to the sixth game. What's your plan going forward so that you avoid that disappointment? We, we never want to draw any match, and we, we never want to lose any match. And uh, I think that it's, it's something that I appreciate a lot about this club, because I think I'm the first person who, who, who does not like to lose. Uh, and that permeates through to the rest of the team, because the other coaches are more or less like me. Uh, I'm one of the bad lo losers. Even in the smaller teams that I coached, I did not lose a lot. Uh, I would rather take a draw, but to lose, no. If you can check the records, I don't, I don't like to lose. Uh, for me, uh, being in a team like Sundowns, that has got a culture and a mentality to win everything. It's, it's, it's exactly what you would want to be in if you are a coach like me, because uh, a lose, even when we have played exceptionally well, uh, that result chases my kids away from me. You know, so it's, 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 it's my mentality and I've always had this mentality. I remember when I was coaching a team in the ABC Mozart League where I started to be the head coach of an ABC Mozart League team. 
Uh, I got a team two weeks before the season started, but I never lost a match uh, for, for the first 20 matches of the season, and I won the first 15 matches because I like to win. I, I, from school football, from anywhere else, I, I enjoy that the outcome that makes me to, to be the one who goes to the next person and say, unlucky. Not for somebody to come to me and say, unlucky, you know. Your colleague, uh, Coach Rolani, spoke uh, about um, the club's process in terms of getting the player. And uh, once the player comes here, you get attached to the person of the, uh, the player, before the player, I mean. So just looking into the French players, Coach, um, just how are they right now in terms of emotional and mentally looking at the direction that the club is taking, the fact that they're on the sidelines and they're injured. Whilst there are my key players who are coming in and doing well as some of his colleagues have indicated, how are these guys from the side not dealing with that? And also, Coach Fred has spoke about how we can give it to one person. We are fortunate because we don't have French players. So we, we don't have those problems. Because everybody gets a chance to play in this team because we, we believe in all of them and we don't keep players that we don't think are going to influence uh, the outcomes. And the players know we've got a very big cake uh, that we must cut nicely for everybody to get a share, you know. Coach, so much of negative comments came through from Chile, you know, when it uh, uh, became obvious that uh, Marcelo uh, was coming to play for Sundowns, you know. Most of the South Americans don't really uh, follow South African football, not even African football, you know. They, they, his move was spoken of as being a step uh, backwards, you know. And uh, I mean, how, how, how would you, uh, uh, what are your thoughts when you, you, you hear of such sentiments, you know, that looks down about the standard of football in this side of the world? To be honest, I wouldn't think it is, it is about looking down at, uh, at our standards, but it's, it's the expectations that they have of, 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 of their player. Uh, remember the boy is playing for the senior national team of Chile and that team is regularly in the World Cup and this boy was with Arsenal uh, in England there were possibilities before to go to Italy and all these other big uh, big leagues and uh, you also have your South African players uh, going to to Belgium to all these other leagues and when you when he goes to a league that you you don't know you will always say, where is he in Kosovo? Where is that? You know, and, and you will have those question marks. But those question marks uh, sometimes have got a posi positive spin on it because then they start to follow your football. Then when they start to follow your football, they start to realize that, hey, there is a, a, another league that should be given the respect that is required. And that league is the South African League because now... Uh, just look at it, maybe from a positive side. <coughs> How many Chileans have come to South Africa? And if you've never had a Chilean player, why would they think big of the South African football when they've never had an encounter of what South African football is all about? But now that uh, Marcelo is here and they are looking at sundowns every day, don't you think it might have a positive spin towards the league? Uh, unlike if they, they, they never showed any any negativity towards towards our league. For me, that would have been ignorant because they've never really been closer to what is happening to South African football. And one of their key players is coming to this league that they don't know about. Now, after having interest in what is happening to South Africa, let's check maybe, are there no many Chilean players that are going to come to South Africa? Are they not going to have a lot of positive things to say about South African football once they see it very closely and they are able to follow it because sometimes when you don't know about a, a particular league, you always have question marks. Up until you hear, hey, Kosovo is qualified for, for the World Cup, then you start, hey, well, this, 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 is a, this is a serious team or serious country. Th that is what happens. So 
even on this on this uh, Marcelo thing, I, I, I take it very positively. Would now they will have a little bit more interest in what is happening in our league in order to keep Marcelo in their team. Maybe we'll also have to try and bring the the national team of Chile to come and see what South African football is all about. And that becomes a very positive spin and we have gained one more country that will give us more millions to watch our football. And that for me is very positive. I, I don't even listen to, to, to these things because I'm not even on these social media things and uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested in, in what somebody thinks because in most cases uh, they'll sell you a, a dummy. You will think you are bigger than you are and, we, and yet you have lost against TS Galaxy and you have drawn against Sekukune. So who do you think you are? So f any coach that would say we will walk uh, maybe he's the one who should lose his job because he should work very hard to make this thing difficult. Uh, if I'm coaching a smaller team, I would always want to beat Sundowns because I want to, to, to show what, what I'm also capable of as a coach than to, to now work as a marketing manager of Sundowns and yet I'm a coach of another team, you know. So personally, I would, I would, I would do that and that is what probably I've done in the past to try and make sure that I beat these big teams. Because it's, it's, it, anybody can do it. It's not like Sundowns is invincible. Last question from you. Yeah. Uh, Coach, it's Kumutum Kwena from Sunday World. My question is almost similar to Tiseto's question. Uh, Coach Gavin Hunt mentioned last week that Sundowns' financial muscle is weakening the league and that Sundowns maybe are streets ahead of other teams. And how do you respond to such consistent and constant uh, criticism or praise and then without losing you know, the focus and, and the job at hand? I don't think it's criticism. Eh? Uh, but I would have the same question or same talk when he was at Vets and Vets was signing so many players and he won the league. Were they killing the league? Because the, the truth of the matter is, if you were to check that season when Vets won the league, Kevin signed a lot of quality players and he did very well. And that for me was, was very positive. And to say Sundowns must, must walk here now and, and win every match because they are signing quality players. I think this thing has been happening for all these years. Sundowns has always signed uh, quality players throughout the years, even before I was here. Even before the president owned this club, they signed top players, uh, Zolama Obes and the others before. They did, they did that. And I, all, I don't think it's always about, about uh, the amount of money that you can splash to build a team. Because there are teams that are really doing a lot of good work and they, they, they will become a very big force in South African football very soon by focusing on what will work for them. Because the truth of the matter is, if you can improve your coaching in your club, if you can improve your coaching and improve your scouting, you can still have a lot of top players that can challenge any other team in the league. And if I can give you a team that maybe you can make with, with players that are not as expensive from the PSL, you can build a very strong team by having a very good eye to look exactly at what you, are, you, you want for your team. And I do believe a lot of other teams are doing exceptionally well in that space. Look at Stellenbosch. Stellenbosch has not signed any big name player but those players very soon will be wanted by all the big clubs in the country because they are good because their youth program is yielding the results no wonder they are winning the mdc or the, DC, the ddc no wonder they, they they have they have promoted so many youngsters 
and already they have lost uh, some of their top players that were known by nobody, the Dupree's, the Quinnicas, uh, in as much as he had traveled a little bit. But they, they are able to replace with the right players. They brought Nruli from TS Galaxy, they brought Magaga from Paroka, and those are very good uh, young players that can really influence, influence uh, their team. So for me, when teams start to, to focus more on, on their youth program, and teams start to focus more on their scouting programs, there are so many players out there. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm coaching Sundowns now, but probably there are five, six, seven good strikers that I've seen in, in, in football in Africa and everywhere else. But teams do not have strikers. And we can't sign all those foreign strikers that I've seen. And some of them are coming from the smallest teams in Africa. We played against a team called Maniema from Congo. No, not many people still remember the striker that scored against us. He was a top striker that you would expect South African teams to be looking at these teams when we are playing them because uh, Kitwa was, 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 was exceptional against us. He is a very good player, but we don't look at that. We, we, we are recycling. The same player that you saw somewhere five, six, seven years ago, you still want to see again. And that is the problem because we don't have confidence in, in bringing up the youth, bringing up younger players that can play for you. Uh, th there is a young boy that played, that played uh, a very big role uh, for his team uh, to, to do so well in so many competitions. He was a young player that had done exceptionally well, who should have been the key player for that particular team last season. But last season probably played a quarter of the matches. Why? Because we want to recycle the older ones. I'm not saying old players must not, be, must not be given a chance, but I'm saying teams can do better than what they are doing. They are not really casting their, wide, their net wide enough to get talent. And in, in a football team, you should be looking for better players all the time and nothing else. Thank you, Coach. But he didn't give us the name of the player. No, he doesn't. Really not, 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 not. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach.